Well, hello there, guys. My name is ESO, and welcome back to another episode of Skyrim Mods Weekly, where we look at another free player homes you can find in Skyrim. Some very hidden and unique player homes, in fact, that I am super excited to share with you. Because I don't know if you guys noticed this incredible view in front of us, but it's the view from our first house just here at the top of a mountain. A Dwemer style architectural building, kind of based on the same style we've seen uh, in previous Elder Scrolls titles such as Morrowind. It suddenly got very foggy unfortunately, but I was about to point out a few locations I can see from my house because, I mean, my goodness. Firstly, down there we have the city of Windhelm, and then over there to the north we can see the College of Winterhold, precariously balanced on its rock. And then you can actually see the Shrine of Azura as well over there. It's just amazing. You can even see Hythrothgar just on the other side of the mountain on the throat of the world up there. We can see down into the hot springs of whatever that area is called. I can't even remember. There's so, so many locations. But guys, let me show you where this is on the map right here. It's like literally one of the coolest views in the game. The opposite side of where I showed you another house mod in a previous video. All of these house mod videos are linked down below in the description, by the way, guys. If you want to go back and check out the playlist and see all of the unique house mods I've found in Skyrim. But this one is located just east over here on the map. So, once you find it at the top of this mountain, you do need to kind of uh, walk your way up here, which is no easy task in itself. You will get to the front entrance. It has a very wonky looking door, almost like a vault from Fallout. Um, and, oh, okay. It seems like there is a snow bear that has decided to make a home here. Please, Mr. Bear, no. Stop it. Do you know what, Mr. Bear? I've had enough of your antics. Oh my goodness! Luckily we did not see his tragic death as he flew down the mountainside. But it seems someone was taking a camp outside my house here. Perhaps it was Lydia because I never let her inside my house. That would be terrible indeed for her to stink up the place. Okay, let's head on inside. So let's go ahead and break in to our own home. Because I am so good at lockpicking. Obviously, I don't know. I can't believe I actually did that first time. There you go. Oh, I've leveled up as well. Wowee. So here we are. We have a very unique architectural home here with lots of calligraphy on the walls and its own flooring, wall textures, and everything to really fit that Morrowind theme. In fact, I'm going to get out my torch right now so you guys can actually see where we're going. So we come into the entrance foyer and I mean this place is just built underground as you can see. You can see the lava beneath my feet there and if we can go first into the alchemist's tower because check this out. Look at this. Looks awesome doesn't it? All the alchemy ingredients. It's like visiting Blackreach but in your own home. We also have the imbuing chamber. It actually has inside it all of the different recipes, which some of which are quite rare actually, for the different types of spiders you can create and imbue with magical properties. If you guys haven't seen my video on this, it is in the base game. Um, it's like a new creature. You can basically throw spiders at your enemies and they explode and stuff. It's really cool. Um, I'll link the, the video explaining that down below in the description. But you have one in your own house, which is pretty awesome. Oh my god. Where is the other one? Where's the other one? I can still hear the Ninroot sound. We're just going to have to put up with it. I cannot find it. But anyway, we have another little alchemy table here with a few little pots of different ingredients. And then the actual alchemy lab itself. And they've kind of like minimized lots of ingredients here. And it looks like a real cool alchemy station. And obviously we have lots of different things for harvesting and creating poisons and potions to fire into Genesis' back when she runs in front of me whenever I'm using my bow. So, there's actually a Jaren root here, which is used to make the most powerful potion in the game as well. Usually there's only one of them in the game, but you can't duplicate it. But it makes a poison that legitimately does, I think, over 2,000 damage or something silly. Uh, I actually already made a video about how to create that as well, which I'll link down below in the description. But let's head out of this tower. 
and go into the next room, which is just down here. It's kind of like the underground section of our house. Well, the whole house is underground, isn't it, really? Look at that. Moving architecture. Wowee. And there is a heavy Dwemer chest here, which is empty, but reminds me of Morrowind. A lava thing coming into the smith, and you can actually use this as a smelter, and you can smelt ingots in this lava as well. But this is, you know, effectively just a standard smith area, which is very Dwemer themed, and I know a lot of you guys absolutely love Dwemer ruins. So, oh, moving machinery, I mean, you know, it just completes it for me. But now we can go down here into the aid room. So this room is very interesting because right down here on this pedestal we have the Tarnished Aether Index. Now this is a ring that you can pick up and basically whenever you equip this ring you will be teleported back to your house um, just here in this room and you can like walk out of it and be like hard left dab. But now let's head back into the rest of the house and look at the rest of it. Here we are, now we've explored the basement layer, let's carry on. In fact, let's go upstairs up this little pipe here and go to the balcony level. And guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe and press that bell icon and then YouTube will actually let you know every time I release a new Skyrim weekly mod video for you guys to check out. And if you have any awesome house mods or weapon mods or any other cool kind of request that you want me to cover or even if you're a mod author just let me know down below and if i check it out and it's fun to play then i will definitely cover it in my next video here we are on the balcony with the most amazing view over skyrim which i was pointing out Damn, to you at. that's quite a sight it is it is indeed the best sight i've ever seen in my life to be honest look at that I mean, there's not really many places in Skyrim where you get such a view over the whole game. It's incredible. We could jump off this right now and just... Oh, nice. That's the Temple of Boethia. There's, there's a lot of blood down there. <laughs> okay. Can I look through this? No, but it's pretty cool having a telescope here. And then there's a nice chair with a candle and some snowberries. Pretty sure they're poisonous. Anyway... Lots of Dwemer materials here. I just love the entrance doors as well. Like, they've done a really nice job of crafting this from scratch, haven't they? Little canopy for those days it is sunny. Obviously in Skyrim it's not often. <laughs> Let's head back downstairs. Because the next area I want to go is up here, up these stairs, to the tower room. Here we are. This is the bedroom area, and, I mean, this is really cool. This is the tonal enchanter as you guys can see it's got a special little effect that makes it super exciting and obviously yeah you can enchant your items here we can also use the staff enchanter just over here on the left so you pretty much have access to everything you need i honestly don't know what this is blue liquid dripping into a bucket it must be a leak but i'm not so sure why and then we have a little cooking station just here um you can put food in here and craft it yourself very nice little oven there you know let's get the torch back out okay now you can actually see fantastic it was very dark before uh, and obviously this is my throne with my books to read and a mammoth task what else do we have i don't even know what that is it's very fancy though very fancy indeed is that a bong i'm not sure hmm <laughs> and then this is obviously like a little dressing area with some journals and reports about this location as well as a little statue of a Dwemer Centurion which is always really cool but yeah no I just love the environment uh, we've even got a shrine of Azura which obviously we could see on the mountaintops there as well and if you activate this shrine it of course gives you an active effect 10% resist magic which is uh, incredibly useful and then here's the bedroom with a little dressing table a shrine to Diabella Hawker's tusks with tons of pearls in, and obviously the bed, which just looks very nice indeed, with a little chest at the bottom. So it's quite a simple bedroom, really, with just everything packed into one place at the top of the tower. So, yeah, really impressed. I mean, I love this house from the outside more than I do the inside, to be honest. It's one of oh wow, this is actually the the Dwemer thing that they took from Blackreach. Um, 
I don't know what it is. There's not much known about it other than the secret little Easter egg that occurs when you shout at it and then a dragon appears. So that's pretty cool. But let's head back outside into Skyrim. So now you guys can see the left tower, the smaller tower, is actually where the alchemy room is based. And then the larger tower is where the bedroom is located. And you can see the smithing area outside there on the bottom floor. But it's a... Uh, a very unique and interesting building and it reminds me of the wizard's tower in oblivion but just with a dwemer theme and it has literally one of the best views in the entirety of skyrim and the house is unique it's just the best of both worlds okay so that's it for the first home but next guys i'm going to be showing you shrek's swamp house in fact it here we are in the beautiful swamp lands of skyrim i'm being attacked Okay guys, so the second house on our list is located here in the swamps of Morthal. Not too far from Solitude, you will find Shrek's house just here. That's right, Shrek's house in Skyrim. The famous ogre actually lives here, under the castle of Solitude, the blue palace over there in the distance. We turn around here in the depths of the swamp we will see shrek's house and i kid you not this is the most like representation of shrek's house i've actually seen so let's go and take a look you know what, let's just go right in with checking out the outside area the swamp house indeed if ever i've seen one so he's got a knife and some fish here he's clearly been fishing with the most rad fishing setup i've ever seen yeah that's it scare all the fish away Let's have a look around here because this is the outdoor smithing area. We've got a fish rack as well, um, but we've got a anvil, a workbench, and a tanning rack, and also a grindstone to sort out your weapon, Genesa, because you're always... And there's also a campfire outside, which is nice. But then we get up to the true mecca of the swamps, Shrek's house. I mean, look at this. We've got a little boardway walking up to the front door. And then it's set into the tree trunk itself. And we can open that up. Oh my god, yes. Look at this place. It's exactly like it is in the movie. There's two seats for Donkey, obviously. Even though he's not here right now. And then there's an alchemy lab. Just here, a cooking pot by the fire. And just some shelving with standard ogre stuff like cabbages. Obviously onions. So Shrek can explain that ogres have layers. Right, Genesa? You know all about this? And um, here's the enchanting altar, just uh, stacked on a barrel, nothing pretty there. I mean, it is, after all, a swamp house. And then, look at this, we've got the bedroom area. Very, 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 very simple. Just a bed. You can't really get many more simple than that, can you, Jenissa? But, I mean, wow, we've even got the roots coming through the ceiling. I really like this house. It's very simple. I mean, there's actually a tree growing through a fireplace, but... It really does feel like you are underground in like this cozy little swamp house. Um, though I think some of the furniture is a bit small for an ogre. Let's head back out into Skyrim. I mean, depending what angle you look at it from, you really wouldn't notice that there is even a house here. It really does just look like a grassy verge in the middle of the Morthal Swamp. I think it's one of those houses that just suits its environments really well. It's really law friendly, despite it being based on Shrek's home. I really do think it looks very much like it belongs in the swamp. So from the swamps of Morthal, we now come over here to the city of Whiterun. From there, if we head down the valley just over here, um, where the Valtheum Towers are, you will find a waterfall that drops down and leads us to an island where you find Gwent Hearth, which is the name of the Witcher-themed house. Let's fast travel. And that is the waterfall I was talking about. And just at the bottom, you will find a pathway leading us to the Witcher house, which you can see just over the verge here. I mean, the roof already looks really cool. But um, let's take a look around the back here as we approach. I mean, it's one of those, like, you know, it's just a cobblestone house built out of giant stones. But I can really see, like, the Witcher vibe you get from this building. It's it's in a really nice location anyway as well. That just, like, no one really bothers to visit. And it just really blends into the environment. So let's have a little look around here because there's some mushrooms coming out of um, this pot here, which is a nice little touch. It just looks like a very nice, cozy little cottage, to be honest huh? with you. Then up here we have, like, our smithing station 
that is covered in grass because of a grass mod I have installed. Um, and there's a chest here. A smelter, which we can obviously use to smelt ourselves some ingots. Like so. Nice. Uh, and then we've also got a workbench, which has kind of been customized and shrunken down a little bit, so that's quite cool. Um, but yeah, just all the standing standard stuff you need for uh, smithing. So let's have a look inside then. Um, I'm not so sure how big this house is actually going to be. Here we are, indoors. And I mean, this house is really tiny. It's literally just what you see on the outside is what you get on the inside. But here we have our alchemy skill book by the looks of it. Some arcane enchanter. Oh god, that looks awesome, doesn't it? I love the little um, healing um, suffix effects that they have glowing there. And we've actually got a armor rack area, so you can just store all your armor here, and then another separate sort of uh, barrel just to store a bunch of weapons in, which is very Witcher-like, to be honest. Just having a bunch of weapons like that. I love the witch chest, though, that they've added. That's a nice detail. Um, and then we've got just tons of soul gems, so... This is really cool because each um, storage area is actually labeled so you can really just put your ingredients and whatnot where it belongs and you can easily find it because it's kind of like visually represented. It's like books, maps and notes um, and we got a whole cabinet there with some interesting documents probably with notes from the Witcher and little Easter eggs hidden there. Um, even the chest is Witcher-like and so are the iconography over here. We do have a Shrine of Mara though. Ah, what are these? These look a little bit like, um... Ah, from the Gwent card game. Ah, okay, that's cool. And there's even a jewelry box here, which is nice. None of this stuff is animated to open, which is a bit of a pity, but, um, I don't mind that too much. Obviously, he's eating Skyrim food, though, which I respect. Um, we've even got a pantry, a wine rack, some nice plates, and a fireplace where we can use the cooking pot. But, yeah, obviously, we've got the alchemy station... Uh, and the enchanting station and everything else you kind of need in a house. So yeah, I actually really do like this place. It's tiny. It's kind of exactly what you'd expect. And I really do enjoy small houses like this because they're not trying to be something crazy or ridiculous. And I have this one chair in front of the fireplace where I can grow old, I guess. And then you can exit the house out from this pathway just here, which takes you all the way up and out to the lands of Skyrim beyond. Though you do want to be careful of that neighboring giant camp that's right next to your house. So there you have it guys. That is it for today's video. We looked at three law friendly houses, each extremely different, but some of them smaller with kind of very law friendly atmospheric environments uh, that they're placed in. And they just work really well in the game, despite one being based on Shrek and the other one being based on the Witcher. It just it looks like it really belongs in the game, so I'm a huge fan of these. And don't forget, guys, if you do enjoy this modding series, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing with the bell icon, and then YouTube will let you know every time we release a new Skyrim mod video on the channel. And if you've got any suggestions or things you want me to cover, let me know in the description or the comment section even, and I will definitely try and get around to it. I try and read everything I can, especially on Instagram, but thanks very much, guys, for watching me, ESO, and I will see you in the next Skyrim video. So have a fantastic day, and goodbye.